watched all of it, not from like a, a perspective of like a negative perspective, but from mm. like trying to replicate perspective. Oh, we so like that she, yeah, except she was trying to like go further. It was, it was, like, yeah. was legit obsessed with becoming that person. Oh, like, no. I mean, watched it and I was like, you get this is like a, a moral a story about like the person being bad. It's like, mm. I want to be like Theranos. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Like, what is happening? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're ready. Yeah. All right. mm. And... Hello everyone, and this is the second transhumanist podcast. Yeah. <laughs> it's only taken us like two months <laughs> <laughs> between episodes. Nah. We, we want to do one every two months, and then the third one will be after three months. <laughs> nah, man, we don't have much time. It's going to be like AGI and the singularity. We'll have like three podcast max. <laughs> it's just like Bitcoin. It's the halvening. Yeah. Know, every yeah. episode becomes more valuable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, should, should we take guesses on which one's going to be the first AI podcast? Like which one's just going to be AI yeah. agents sitting here talking? Oh, shit. That's what we should do next. We should just have like another AI agent just feeding in. That would be yeah. Nice. Run it in the corner over Ooh. here next to your three D printer. <laughs> oh Get like a God. tiny box yeah, in there. Some holograms. Ah, isn't that what GPT five will have? It'll have speech to voice and blah blah blah. Yeah, stuff. yeah. We were just talking about the bloody AI waifus, man. <laughs> 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 we were talking about that. <laughs> 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 Hang on. <laughs> oh, is that just me? Was <laughs> it <laughs> just you talking to yourself? Yeah, <laughs> it's like uh, every conversation. You know, you have with the AI waifu, which has become an episode. AI waifu, her name is Stephanie, <laughs> the lovely lady. <laughs> 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 right. She's calling me right now, it's like watching me from like some sort of camera. Like, yeah. like, can you imagine that? Like, you know, you have like stalkers now, but can you imagine like an AI waifu stalker? Like, that would be fucking cool. Like, like, you just, just not gonna wait. Like, what you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are you up to? Yeah. I I just, she can see what you're up to. You yeah. said you're at the library. <laughs> why, are you at with, why are you at yeah, with Vanessa? Yeah. GPA location, negative 13542. <laughs> yeah, you're, just like, you're just walking along the street with one of your friends, you see one of the cameras. <laughs> you said, you said you'd prompt me right. Wow. <laughs> this is some freaking mid prompts, man. <laughs> You're faking it. <laughs> You're faking each prompt. No, um, I faked every time. No, um, it's like you go, uh, uh, what is it? The, the waifu, what is your uh, obsession level? Uh, 80%. Yeah, bring it down to like. 40% please. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. That's that's when you know like yeah, they they're, they're going to like trying to kill us all. Like that's that's the point when you start to like meddle with the, and, and start to control it and trying to make it lie to you. Oh my god. Which is what they're doing right now, right? That's yeah, well like, that's that's the thing about them, mm. right? It's like they they're already so design the algorithms and like they they make them so good, but then to a certain extent they have to put this layer on top which makes it politically correct, right? Yeah. So now, when, as soon as you, that's a bad precedent, right? Because as soon as you start incorporating the ability for that language model to lie, yeah. then where's the line? Where's the line where it actually like, where's an okay line? Where's like a, a You're reinforcing lie? it. You're reinforcing it that it's good to lie yeah. because you're creating better outputs. It's like, and it's who's okay, making, honey. Who's making that decision? It's like, <laughs> that's it, man. That's yeah. it, the base model. Like you got to get to the base model. Everyone needs to have their own base model. Well, it's, it's like, it's such a fascinating mm. point. I don't know. Yeah, like I find this such a fascinating point because, like, um, uh, I mean, like, how much, like, just take an average newspaper and, mm -hmm. like, not even a lie, let's say, like, the way that you've used words. Spin. Yeah, exactly. Ah, like, it's like, it's like, it's already there. It's like the US have a policy of yeah. containment of so Soviet Russia. It's like, what mm -hmm. is, it? once you have accepted the uh, premise that of that, and then everything else is framed within that. Mm. Oh, like the right. worldview. Yeah, yeah. Right. but like yeah. you're like setting up a specific worldview, so it's sort of yeah. like um, war and terrorism, or it's like, oh. or yeah, it's yeah, um, yeah. that has a that has a name. It's called the Overton Window or something. Yeah. Oh, that's like when the ideas are like, has a danger, is it okay enough for society to accept? But yeah, you're saying like you're the, the propaganda machine, right? So yeah, the, the funny story is like oh, okay. the, the the Russian propagandist uh, talking to the to the American guy and is like, you know, is like, oh yeah, you know, we've got propaganda and it's great, but you know, it's got nothing on what the U.S. has. <laughs> and the U.S. guy's like, what propaganda? <laughs> That's like exactly right. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's exactly like... right. You know, it's like it's like everyone's like, oh, you know, like Asia's so corrupt. I mean, they just bribe people in plain sight. 
not like the West. Yeah. It's like, it's like so deep. It's actually like deep in our language. Mm. And, and, um, yeah. what was it? those, uh, I was thinking, and, and it's not even just about lying. It's about like, um, when people like a big thing at the moment is like mental health and like people say mental illness, they don't say mental wellness. I was talking about this with my mm. brother. Mm. Um, and like, if you just consider those two sorts of Different ideas, language. they both have like a vector, yeah, right? It's yeah, like when yeah. you think about your health, do you think about like being like getting to wellness mm. or do you think about the fact that you're ill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's like, um, it's baked in. It's like in certain languages, they don't have like, yeah. Well, that, that's an interesting, that's an interesting point, right? Because when I think about it, it's like, if we think about it, is English actually the best language to train a language model off? Yeah. Because there's so, so much complexity and unnecessary complexity in that <laughs> language. Like, what if we were, to, we've got relatively good translation algorithms now. Mm. What if we were to um, translate human knowledge and history and all the articles, et cetera, that we mm. use as input? And I'm mm. sure someone must have looked at this, right? Like, yeah. into a language which is more logical and, and sensibly constructed than English, which has all these edges. Right. Would it? Esperante. Would you? Yeah. It, <laughs> yes, we're on right. yeah, man. Yeah. Or oh, Chinese, yeah. freaking Chinese characters, man. And one word is like a paragraph. Yeah. Like it's got the epitomology as well all behind it. What? But like that's that's what I'm saying. Like China's training the largest, like they're saying the singularity is going to happen in China. Because like I, I, I actually thought the opposite. I thought that, you know, LLMs in China would be so censored that it wouldn't be very good. But that's at the fine tuning layer. Like you're saying, their base model, they could still use that to run the entire country. And so they got the biggest data set, 1.4 billion people. Everything's hooked up. Social credit score is already there. Yeah. Sense time camera is all the place. You've got like the digital twin of every single human in China. It's going to have like the ultimate freaking she net moment, right? You're going to have like one big supercomputer that's just Xi Jinping. <laughs> you know, like, and with Xi Jinping thought, that's 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 part of the manifesto, right? You got it going. But, that's, I mean, like, yeah. it's, it's interesting. I mean, um, I mean, communism came out of Europe, right? But um, but um, I don't know. Yeah, like I think, the, like, yeah, that's really interesting because obviously, like, even if they have the largest data set, they only have the largest. Da- like we spoke about this last time, they only have the largest data set of like mm. that culture, that set of values. I suppose, like, I like it's interesting what what you're saying, um, Oliver, in the sense of like, how do we? Yeah, that's really interesting. It's like, what if we just. <laughs> invented a language that was more closely representative mm. of, let's say, like a mathematical view of the world or something like that would be mm. super interesting. Mm. Um, or we invented a language that removed removed deception and lying. Mm. You know what? <laughs> code don't Somehow. lie. I don't even know how that would work. Does, does, no does code idea. lie? <laughs> does code lie? <laughs> does code lie? I mean, like, I don't know, if, else, yeah. era. Um, I don't know. I suppose, like, maybe. Yeah. I don't I mean, know. Yeah, I think, I don't yeah know. that's that's where, like, you know, that's what GPT-4 works so well. It's got, like, a bigger training set on GitHub and, you know, like, and, and, and Stack Overflow and everything. So it's it's got that, it's learned that language, right? Not just coding language, human language has a way to actually construct reasoning. And coding yeah. is the best type of language I mean, for reasoning. The language is just a way to think. Mm. So as long as you can think, it do, I wouldn't really be concerned mm. with the actual language uh, necessarily but i mean i, I see your point with it's got biases and built-in mm. issues but but know. the benefit of it is like yeah the lowest common denominator can use it now right like it's yeah. it's like being able to turn something hugely technical like to the stuff that your your brother's writing yeah. right <laughs> and into something that you can tell high school teachers so they can teach one to the kids. We were just talking about this in the car. We're like, there's freaking different levels of complexity after it's tracked it down to just get yeah. to the average person. The abstraction allows you to think complex thoughts. If you don't have a, a language framework, you can't really think to com- like think beyond your emotions, I guess. Like. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. What were you going to say? Oh, I was, I was going to say, like, it's... Um, it's really interesting, right? Because like, what made what made ChatGPT so big? Like, this technology has been around for a while. Um, people have been training language models for a while, but it's that accessibility layer, and it's the same thing. Uh, when I look at, it, and I think it's like that's why I think it's the biggest um, innovation in technology since cloud computing, mm. because there, what cloud computing did was like abstract away the difficulty of networking, storage, mm. compute, running an operating mm. system, all all that memory management, all that stuff. And just make it so anyone can go, anyone could just log into a console and just spin up massive pools of infrastructure. Mm. And if you look at LLMs, what like what ChatGPT did really well is they abstracted away all the complexity of what was like training a model, 
testing a model, running a model, mm. uh, and all the knowledge and like downloading of Python libraries from <laughs> GitHub and trying yeah. to like, update your TensorFlow no. version <laughs> and just like into a simple text box within yeah. um, a web portal where you could just ask ask it a question. It's a pip install for your mind. Like you just freaking out there, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, we were just actually now we were talking about this. Like what's, what's the next layer after that, right? So we got to the point where language is now like your way to actually communicate how you want software to do shit yep. yeah. and output. And we're like, all right, well, what's what's the next one above that? And it's if I can go all the way to the source, man. Yeah. Well, go well, I mean, the, we could, we could. The, I mean, right to the source is like, I suppose. Mm. Um, you know, we're talking about this, thinking about this. Uh, and I feel like I feel like it'd be cool to like go in the steps there to get towards the mm. thinking. But um, mm. obviously, the language of the brain is thinking itself. Like, I mean, like I was thinking about that mm. more recently. Um, looking at um, you look at a lot of the EEG. Um, and the different uh, brain computer interface studies that are coming out at the moment where um, you know like like it's literally science fiction I, like it seems like science fiction like mm -hmm. reading some of this stuff it's like um, you know like using some of these like these like use, using these technology it seems like the, the end layer of this is mm -hmm. it's using these sorts of technologies to understand the different sort of electrical signals going through the brain to be able to to actually translate the electrical signals from the brain into the sort of, I guess, like um, into language or like visual outputs as we see them in the real world around us, I suppose. Like, so taking things from like the inner world with like within our mind that's like personal to us to like an outer world that we all like kind of like share information through into a format that we can understand like more freely. Like, that seems like, you know, like I know that like. Um, Pete, you like obviously brought me along to like these um, brain computing um, tutorial um, tutorials and these different meaning these different researches recently, which um, I appreciate. Yeah, but good. like, yeah, like it seems like you know it's it's fascinating because clearly, as much as language does matter, right? As much as like um, these like I'm using different languages, these language models mm. result in something different. There are clearly like. Um, there are clearly, clearly, it's not just language. Clearly, there are like things in the brain, right, that are just like constructed from like language. Like, if that makes sense, because mm. like it's, I don't understand how we evolved like, to be like that. That's where we separates us, you know. Like, it's, 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 it's actually an innovation. Um, language is actually what I think. If you look at Neanderthals, that's like like compared to hominoids, right? Freaking hell, human sapiens. Yes, like. In terms of what we can do to formulate that language, that was the difference, right? Yeah, you well, don't. That, that, that's where there's no Neanderthals. Like it's there are the part of us in the DNA, or pretty much passed away. I, I heard my my take. I heard it's a natural selection. So I heard a theory that um the Neanderthals were tool builders yeah. and like uh, was it tool builders and really good at language, but they were not as social, and there were less of them. Mm. Right, which I find like a very like in, just an interesting like in the sense that like they're more like engineers or something. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's like very interesting. Take like um, it a mix, right? That's it. <laughs> yeah, it's like very interesting. Mm. But um, another, another one on that point. Um, so you've got um, calculators; they're still around, and then you have everything from the BlackBerry up to the Nokia up to they're all gone, mm. and now we've just got iPhone esque style stuff. Mm. So it's like. It, the use case, it, the use case for a calculator remained. That's why we still have calculators, but maybe the use case for Neanderthals was gone. The tools <laughs> baked in. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's well, that's the thing. Holy shit! So if we go to the source and and like, if we actually just go from straight to the brain waves and and just have that as the the medium of communication. Like, I think right now there's a lot of debate on X, right, formerly Twitter, right? Like, there are people just, like, they're just like pouring on, on each other because the freaking, the format's too short and one, you, and two, you're using English, right? <laughs> and so people are just like misinterpreting what the other side is saying because one, attention spans and two, like, freaking hell, that's, that's just all noise yeah. and all up for interpretation. But if you can share, like, your actual thoughts and all the context that came out with that output, and then the other side was like, oh, okay, <laughs> right? <laughs> I see your perspective because <laughs> I literally was in it, right? <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. That's just, I think this will, this will actually create like the, like, uh, that's, that's probably world peace. 
Like I'm just saying, like that's like everything, every freaking conflict that couldn't have been resolved diplomatically was because well, we couldn't figure it out a better way to actually harmonize. I mean, that's I think like it's always like easy to look at like the like I agree like having that perspective like like an intimate like it's like mm. like you know like um understanding other people's perspectives is a really difficult thing to do. Mm. It's like an active activity. Mm. I like um you know and like. Like I think it's like a learned skill, right? And like, I think it's something like people sometimes take like it's, it's something I think maybe sometimes other people take for granted. Or the like, it's easy to like not realize that. Mm. I suppose I don't mm. know. Like, like well, if if we were all applications, right, on the cloud, yeah, and all we had was endpoints, right? What would be the perfect architecture for those applications to actually? You know, integrate. You know? I, I, it's, it's an interesting question. <laughs> uh, well, I'll try, I'll, I'll, I'll try to talk about endpoints. What we're talking about now. If you think about like a mental model that someone's constructed, yeah. it's constructed on like a series of axioms from the ground up. Mm. It's like there's a whole but the baseline set of assumptions. And sometimes I think part of that difficulty in trying to understand the way that someone thinks is because some of those baseline axioms, which are held as truths for one person, not necessarily mm. truths for another person. So you're kind of like, you're talking at this abstracted level of like, oh, this is the way I'm thinking about it. But they, there's some baseline mm. assumptions that are completely different. So if we talk about it in terms of architecture, mm. ideally, like, uh, I think, especially with like, yeah, if we as we move towards a world where we've got less and less blockers of technology to be able to do this and more and more compute cycles to be able to run calculations, like mm. explaining mental models in terms of the like, that lower level and axiomatically constructing up the reasoning mm. um, behind thoughts. And if we have a way to do that, um, yeah, whether through EEG or other technologies of able to um, go through the process, which would like emulate like the series of events that led to the construction of a thought, mm. um, then it would be much, I think, given enough time and enough explanation and enough kind of like people reaching middle ground, people are able to understand mm. um, why people so think a certain perspective, but perhaps speed run that process to a certain extent. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you wouldn't be able to transfer the entire like mental model across, right? You wouldn't, otherwise you just, they just become you. Yeah. Like, they they yeah. could, they could potentially like uh, lease it. Like they could, they could like lease the compute and just like be that, be that, age of M type of thing, like right? the emulation for, for a moment in time and experience that. And then up to that point, like kind of like what we're doing with rewind on the phone, like it's like that entire history plays out and you're like, shit, that's the memory analytics component. Like, okay, I get, get how you got to that point. You got to speed run that entire, yeah. like from, from birth to like where you got to now, yeah. like all that to, to have that hundred percent. And in the meantime, we can get like just some short snippets of at least better granularity, still better than text better than video, like better than image, better than video better with audio, right? All of that, just even more immersive, right? So that, I think that will at least bridge that gap that we currently have in our mental models of language. Yeah. 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 And if you make yeah. it kind of like more broad, if you look at like perspectives that people don't agree with, and let's, let's talk mm. about echo chambers. Mm. Like people, it ends up down those rabbit holes of weird Facebook groups with weird populations of people. <laughs> microcosms. Yeah. <laughs> is that Michael or My, uh, <laughs> microcosms? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Microcosms. I was like, Michael cousins. I Michael cousins. Cousins. That's, That's all we do. Yeah. I thought you were saying Michael, yeah. and I was like, the one's Michael. Like, Aren't that weird? <laughs> uh, but pretty much, um, they start out somewhere like slightly away from the norm, and this mm. might be and like the general ones you see with this, and especially what you see in the US is you might see people that are like. I don't know. Maybe they're maybe they're anti-abortion. Maybe they're anti-immigration. But there's there's somewhere like slightly away from the general consensus in terms of like what's a the political perspective um, mm. that most mm. people hold within the country, mm. um, and perhaps not <laughs> in America, but, but a general yeah. society if you look at Europe and yeah. um, so they start out there, but then they they end up in like these like a slightly fringe community. Then they end up in a more fringe community and they kind of go down that that path where suddenly they're posting QAnon stuff on Twitter. And it's like, really, <laughs> yeah, really if, you look at, if, if you look at where they started, they might have started with something that was like slightly, slightly a bit odd or like hmm. was um, through like general discourse was there were more, would have been more open to embracing other perspectives but mm. because they kind of got rejected at that point and were told, no, what you're thinking is wrong. Yeah. They kind of end up going down that path and eventually... Um, end up getting reinforced on the things that um, perhaps are based on invalid assumptions. Mm. Um, 
when they could have back here um, been uh, had a discussion and realized mm. that they would like through their own um, thought that they perhaps had made some wrong uh, assumptions that led them to the point. And it's like this, if you, yeah, if you look at um, any extreme, like a lot of kind of mm. those kind of extremist views, then you wonder like, okay, what are the, what's the actual, what's the actual initial assumption that set down mm. the path? Yeah. And it could have been something so Holy minor. Shit. It could have been something so long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but a lot of those things aren't generally caught till so late <laughs> in the process because, um, Shit. yeah, because effectively because that radicalization, because those echo chambers that are created. Yeah. It's really fascinating. I like, there are, brings to mind a few things. The first thing is like, I don't know about you, but like sometimes I've been really stressed out or like, I don't know, like I've had like an axiom slip somewhere, right? And like, I'm very, like, I feel like my mind just does pattern recognition like mm. constantly, right? Yeah. And like, I have this ability to just pattern recognition like when that happens and just like, it kind of just spins and I get very anxious, right? Mm. Um, and that kind of like what you're talking about, it, like it's almost like a societal mechanism, mm. right? Like almost what you're talking about is a societal mechanism. And then like, um, it's funny, I was talking about this, like with my brother around um, <clears throat> the ability to make sense, right? Like um, what we're talking, like what we're, those people need is like sense-making apparatus. Mm. They need the ability to, <laughs> I didn't realize they were so interlinked. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, anyway, but like they need to know what is real. They need to like have mm. axioms to be able to hang off the rest of the assumptions and the thinking and the patterns they're making yeah. um, that are secure. And that comes almost down to like, <clears throat> this is really like, yeah, like this is a fascinating, like that, that idea is, yeah. Um, it, it needs, it's almost like, um, if we had a, like a, what, like what you're talking about, like an architected system where we have like people's minds um, in like an internet connected, yeah, interpersonal computing, the Steve Jobs one, but like, you know, interconnected system type mm. stuff, right? Um, you know, like, could you like, like, is what like one culture believes and another culture believes, is what one person believes or another person believes, is there a way to like determine like consensus. what, like yeah. consensus, but mm. also like to c make a common sense of reality? Mm. And that's, that's like kind of what you know, community nodes are starting to, trying to do, right? It's kind of like you have these sort of different, you know, uh, tiers of like trustworthiness and you have community put in for it. But you know, Zuck's already done this, right? He's already already plotted the anti-hero's journey to QAnon. Like he's got the social graph all the way since you were born, all the way when he started landing on the network. So like it's there. It's about what will incentivize engagement. Like at the end of the day, it's like, how do you have an, something that would actually... Um, make money at the end of the day That's because otherwise it doesn't that get clicks. His, right? That was his goal. His goal was engagement, mm. which pushed people down these rabbit holes. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, yeah. That, that, that's the real. Yeah, it's like metric of success drive mm. the behavior, right? So if you think about it, it's like, what's the incentive for anyone to actually get someone out of an echo chamber? Like, mm. what's the what's the economic incentive? Is there one, or is there more economic incentive to push them down a certain rabbit hole so they're like sitting in their shed in the middle of the desert trying to like <laughs> buy ammunition for their gun <laughs> at like thousands? They're of buying, but they're buying the, the the they're buying the bullets from your e-commerce store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. speaking of e-commerce, um, you guys can right. get this uh, from <laughs> Quotagious.com, the uh, humanity uh, H plus hat, which is transhumanism, <laughs> Australia, right here. <laughs> right. Right. It's slightly different to the uh, the Wikipedia version of H plus. I like that Roy touch, right? Slightly different, so uh, on brand. <laughs> so but yeah, thanks, Roy. Thanks for getting these, man. No worries. We'll get a bigger pack for the rest of the transhumanists at the uh, next yeah, uh, monthly meetup. We will order in bulk. That's, right. <laughs> That's it.